Roman Jezebel and Jewish Ahab's Future Plans, Part 2. This time I have my microphone plugged in if you didn't, if you saw the last one. <laughs> so here we go. 1 Kings chapter 21. <clears throat> Turn your King James Bible to 1 Kings chapter 21. You're going to see a lot more very interesting things here with the study of Ahab being a type of Israel. Jezebel being a type of the Roman Catholic Church. <clears throat> 1 Kings chapter 21, verse 1. And it came to pass after these things that Naboth the Jezreelite had a vineyard which was in Jezreel, hard by the palace of Ahab king of Samaria. And Ahab spake unto Naboth, saying, Give me thy vineyard, that I may have it for a garden of herbs, because it is near unto my house, and I will give thee for it a better vineyard than it. Or if it seem good to thee, I will give thee the worth of it in money. And Naboth, Naboth said to Ahab, The Lord forbid it me, that I should give the inheritance of my fathers unto thee. And Ahab came into his house, heavy and displeased because of the word which Naboth the Jezreelite had spoken to him. For he had said, I will not give thee the inheritance of my fathers. And he laid him down upon his bed and turned away his face and would eat no bread. Poor baby. <clears throat> now what does this relate to? Go to Matthew chapter 21. If you want to keep your hand there, a marker there in 1 Kings chapter 21, you can do that because we'll be coming back. Matthew chapter 21. <clears throat> Matthew 21 verse 33 through 46. <clears throat> Here you have Jesus speaking, and he says, Hear another parable. There was a certain householder which planted a vineyard and hedged it round about and digged a wine press in it and built a tower and let it out to husbandmen and went into a far country. And when the time of the fruit drew near, he sent his servants to the husbandmen that they might receive the fruits of it. And the husbandmen took his servants and beat one and killed another and stoned another. Again, he sent other servants more than the first, and they did unto them likewise. But last of all, he sent unto them his son, saying, They will reverence my son. But when the husbandmen saw the son, they said among themselves, This is the heir. Come, let us kill him, and let us seize on his inheritance. Hmm. And they called him and cast him out of the vineyard and slew him. And when the Lord thereof, when the Lord thereof or therefore, excuse me, of the vineyard cometh, what will he do unto those husbandmen? They say unto him, He will miserably destroy those wicked men, and will let out his vineyard unto other husbandmen, which shall render him the fruits in their seasons. Jesus saith unto them, Did ye never read in the scriptures the stone which the builders rejected, the same as become the head of the corner? This is the Lord's doing, and it is marvelous in our eyes. Hmm. Therefore say I unto you, the kingdom of God shall be taken from you and given to a nation, bringing forth the fruits thereof. And whosoever shall fall on this stone shall be broken, but on whomsoever it shall fall, it will grind him to powder. And when the chief priests and Pharisees had heard his parables, they perceived that he spake of them, and they sought to lay hands on him. But, they, but when they sought to lay hands on him, they feared the multitude because they took him for a prophet. Very interesting. Do you see the tie-in? Ahab wants to take Naboth's vineyard. The Jews, the modern the, you know, nation of Israel there, that when Jesus was on the earth, they wanted to take away the inheritance that belonged to Jesus, the Son of God. Hmm. The prophets are coming and they're saying, hey, the kingdom's coming, the kingdom's coming, and they're killing them. Because you see, they've, uh, they're kind of interested in yoking up with Jezebel. Mm-hmm. Go back to 1 Kings chapter 21. And uh, remember the thing about Jesus Christ being the <coughs> stone there that's cut out without hands that comes and destroys those kingdoms. That's going to be important later. <clears> 1 <throat> Kings 21 and verse 5. 1 Kings, try to get to it here. 21 and verse 5. Down to verse 14. 
But Jezebel, his wife, came to him and said unto him, Why is thy spirit so sad, and that thou eatest no bread? And he said unto her, Because I spake unto Naboth the Jezreelite, and said unto him, Give me thy vineyard for money, or else. If it please thee, I will give thee another vineyard for it. And he answered, I will not give thee my vineyard. And Jezebel, his wife, said unto him, Dost thou now govern the kingdom of Israel? Arise and eat bread, and let thine heart be merry. I will give thee the vineyard of Naboth the Jezreelite. And so she wrote letters in Ahab's name, and sealed them with his seal, and sent the letters unto the elders and to the nobles that were in his city, dwelling with Naboth. Huh. So Jezebel does the dirty work for Ahab, and seals them with his seal? Almost like the seal of Solomon, the supposed star of David? Probably not. Just probably making that up, right? Verse 9, And she wrote in the letters, saying, Proclaim a fast, and set Naboth on high among the people, and set two men, sons of Belial, before him, to bear witness against him, saying, Thou didst blaspheme God and the king. Remember that. And then carry him out and stone him, that he may die. Uh, and the men of, the, of his city, even the elders and the nobles, who were the inhabitants in his city, did as Jezebel had sent unto them, and as it was written in the letters which she had sent unto them, they proclaimed a fast and set Naboth on high among the people. And there came in two men, children of Belial, and sat before him, and the men of Belial witnessed against him, even against Naboth, in the presence of the people, saying, Naboth did blaspheme God and the king. Then they carried him forth out of the city and stoned him with stones that he died. Then they sent to Jezebel, saying, Naboth is stoned and is dead. Hmm. Matthew chapter 26. Go there. Let's see a little tie in here. The book of Matthew chapter 26. Matthew 26 verse 57 is where we're going in the scriptures. Matthew 26, verse 57 through 60. The Bible says here, And they that had laid hold on Jesus led him away to Caiaphas the high priest, where the scribes and the elders were assembled. But Peter followed him afar off unto the high priest's palace, and went in and sat with the servants to see the end. Now the chief priests and elders and all the council sought false witness against Jesus to put him to death, but found none, yea, though many false witnesses came, yet found they none, at the last came two false witnesses. Huh. Isn't that interesting? They found two false witnesses. Very interesting there. And of course, what do they say? Go down to verse 61 of the same passage here. Well, we're right there actually. I'm looking at my notes. <laughs> Verse 61, And said, This fellow said, I am able to destroy the temple of God and to build it in three days. And the high priest arose and said unto him, Answerest thou nothing? Which, what is it which these witness against thee? But Jesus held his peace, and the high priest answered and said unto him, I adjure thee by the living God, that thou tell us whether thou be the Christ, the Son of God. Jesus saith unto him, Thou hast said, Nevertheless I say unto you, Hereafter shall ye see the Son of Man sitting on the right hand of power, and coming in the clouds of heaven. Then the high priest rent his clothes, saying, we have, He hath spoken blasphemy. What further need have we of witnesses? Behold, how now ye have heard his blasphemy. What think ye? They answered and said, He is guilty of death. Hmm. Very interesting there. So there were two false witnesses, and they said he's guilty of death. And what did they do? They took him without the city and they crucified him. They took Naboth without the city and they killed him by stoning him. Again, you see the tie in there. Very interesting. Go back to 1 Kings chapter 21. <clears throat> 1 Kings 21. Verse uh, 15. Okay, verse 15 down through the end of the chapter. 
And it came to pass when Jezebel heard that Naboth was stoned and was dead, that Jezebel said to Ahab, Arise, take possession of the vineyard of Naboth the Jezreelite, which he refused to give thee for money, for Naboth is not alive but dead. And it came to pass when Ahab heard that Naboth was dead, that Ahab arose up to go down to the vineyard of Naboth the Jezreelite to take possession of it. And the word of the Lord came to Elijah the Tishbite, saying, Arise, go down to meet Ahab king of Israel, which is in Samaria. Behold, he is in the vineyard of Naboth, whither he has gone down to possess it. And thou shalt speak unto him, saying, Thus saith the Lord, Hast thou killed and also taken possession? And thou shalt speak unto him, saying, Thus saith the Lord, In the place where dogs lick the blood of Naboth, shall dogs lick thy blood, even thine. And Ahab said to Elijah, Hast thou found me, O mine enemy? <laughs> Still has an attitude against Elijah. And he answered, I have found thee, because thou hast sold thyself to work evil in the sight of the Lord. Hmm, sold thyself, whoredom, like we read about in the last study. Behold, I will bring evil upon thee, and will take away thy posterity, and will cut off from Ahab him that pisseth against the wall, and him that is shut up and left in Israel, and will make thine house like the house of Jeroboam the son of Nebat, and like the house of Baasha the son of Ahijah, for the provocation wherewith thou hast provoked me to anger, and made Israel to sin. And of Jezebel also spake the Lord, saying, The dogs shall eat Jezebel by the wall of Jezreel. Him that dieth of Ahab in the city, the dogs shall eat. And him that dieth in the feed, field shall the fowls of the air eat. Whether the eagles will be gathered together. Huh. Revelation 19. All the birds and all the fowls come to the battle of Armageddon. Hmm. We'll see about the dogs eating the flesh of Jezebel here in a little bit. Verse 25. But there was none like unto Ahab, which did sell himself to work wickedness in the sight of the Lord, whom Jezebel his wife stirred up. And he did very abominably in following idols, according to all things, as did the Amorites, whom the Lord cast out before the children of Israel. And it came to pass when Ahab heard these words, those words, that he rent his clothes and put sackcloth upon his flesh, and fasted, and lay in sackcloth, and went softly. And the word of the Lord came to Elijah the Tishbite, saying, Seest thou how Ahab humbleth himself before me? Because he humbleth himself before me, I will not bring the evil in his days, but in his son's days will I bring the evil upon his house. Um, Ahab is going to be given a chance to repent after Jezebel is destroyed. That's why the uh, merchants of the earth are weeping and wailing about Mystery Babylon being destroyed. Very interesting. Now let's go to... Um, Uh, 2 Kings, let's see where I'm at here. 2 Kings chapter 9. <clears throat> Second Kings chapter 9, verse 4 through 10. The Bible says here, So the young man, even the young man the prophet, went to Ramoth Gilead, and when he came, behold, the captains of the host were sitting, and he said, I have an errand to thee, O captain. And Jehu said, Unto which of all us? And he said, To thee, O captain. And he arose and went into the house, and he poured the oil on his head, and said unto him, Thus saith the Lord God of Israel, I have anointed thee king over the people of the Lord, even over Israel. And thou shalt smite the house of Ahab thy master, that I may avenge the blood of my servants, the prophets, and the blood of all the servants of the Lord at the hand of Jezebel. For the whole house of Ahab shall perish, and I will cut off from Ahab him that pisseth against the wall, and him that is shut up and left in Israel. And I will make the house of Ahab like the house of Jeroboam, the son of Nebat, and like the house of Baasha, the son of Ahijah. And the dogs shall eat Jezebel in the portion of Jezreel, and there shall be none to bury her. And he opened the door and fled. All right, <clears throat> go down to verse 22 of the same chapter. Verse 22. And it came to pass when Joram saw Jehu, and he said, Is it peace, Jehu? And he answered, What peace, so long as the whoredoms of thy mother Jezebel and her witchcrafts are so many? Huh, witchcraft connected to Jezebel. Of course, that's not true of Roman Catholicism. They wouldn't mess with witchcraft or, you know, pharmaceutical stuff or anything like that. So, verse 23. 
And Joram turned his hands and fled and said to Ahaziah, There is treachery, O Ahaziah. And Jehu drew a bow with his full strength and smote Jehoram between his arms. And the arrow went out at his heart, and he sunk down in his chariot. Then said Jehu to Bidkar, his captain, Take up and cast him in the portion of the field of Naboth, the Jezreelite. For remember how that when I and thou rode together after Ahab his father, the Lord laid this burden upon him. Surely I have seen yesterday the blood of Naboth and the blood of his son, saith the Lord, and I will requite thee in this plat, saith the Lord. Now therefore take and cast him into the plat of ground, according to the word of the Lord. But when Ahaziah the king of Judah saw this, he fled by the way of the garden house, and Jehu followed after him and said, Smite him also in the chariot. And they did so at the going up to Gur, which is by Iblium. And he fled to Megiddo and died there. Kind of interesting, the valley of Megiddo, where Armageddon will be. Again, no tie-ins, I'm sure. And his servants carried him in a chariot into Jerusalem and buried him in his sepulcher with his fathers in the city of David. And in the eleventh year of Joram, the son of Ahab, began Ahaziah to reign over Judah. Verse 30. And when Jehu was come to Jezreel, Jezebel heard of it, and she painted her face and tired her head and looked out at a window. I'll just make myself look nice. I'll tire her head. It kind of means, I guess, take the braid and kind of put it around and things and, and paint her face, put on a little bit of makeup to make herself look young and beautiful again. <laughs> and as Jehu entered in at the gate, she said, Had Zimri peace, who slew his master? And he lifted up his face to the window and said, Who is on my side? Who? And there looked out two, to him two or three eunuchs. There's the three again. And he said, Throw her down. So they threw her down, and some of her blood was sprinkled on the wall and on the horses, and he trod her underfoot. Huh. Some of her blood was sprinkled on the wall. Hmm. And on the horses. What happens at the Battle of Armageddon? We come down and we ride through after the Lord slays the 200 million man army of basically the Vatican inspired army. And he trod her underfoot. We ride down through it and we come back with the Lord at the second coming. Interesting tie-in. Verse 34, And when he was come in, he did eat and drink and said, Go see now this cursed woman and bury her, for she is a king's daughter. And they went to bury her, but they found no more of her, her than the skull and the feet and the palms of her hands. Wherefore they came again and told him, and he said, This is the word of the Lord, which he spake by his servant Elijah the Tishbite, saying, In the portion of Jezreel shall dogs eat the flesh of Jezebel, and the carcass of Jezebel shall be as dung upon the face of the field in the portion of Jezreel, so that they shall not say, This is Jezebel. There's no burial place, a special grave or whatever for Jezebel. She's just like dung out in the field. Hmm. Very interesting. Revelation chapter 17. Revelation chapter 17. Verse 16 through 18. And the ten horns which thou sawest upon the beast, these shall hate the whore, and shall make her desolate and naked, and shall eat her flesh and burn her with fire. Huh, the ten kings, Gentile kings, Gentile dogs, the dogs ate her flesh. Huh. For God hath put in their hearts to fulfill his will and to agree and give their kingdoms their kingdom unto the beast, until the words of God shall be fulfilled. And the woman which thou sawest is that great city which reigneth over the kings of the earth. Very interesting. Revelation 2. Let's go back there and we'll see about this thing of Jezebel again. Here in the future. And we'll notice a few things and we'll go through those. Show you from the scriptures that it's none other than Roman Catholicism of today. Uh, Revelation 2, verse 18 through 25. And unto the angel of the church in Thyatira write, These things saith the Son of God, who hath his eyes like unto a flame of fire, and his feet are like fine brass. 
I know thy works in charity and service and faith, and thy patience and thy works, and the last to be more than the first. Notwithstanding, I have a few things against thee, because thou sufferest that woman Jezebel. Obviously, it's not talking about physical Jezebel of the Old Testament. She was eaten by dogs. She didn't last this entire time. <clears throat> Which calleth herself a prophetess, to teach and to seduce my servants to commit fornication, and to eat things sacrificed unto idols. Um, and I gave her space to repent of her fornication, and she repented not. Behold, I will cast her into a bed, and them that commit adultery with her into great tribulation, except they repent of their deeds. And I will kill her children with death, and all the churches shall know that I am he which searcheth, searcheth the reins and hearts, and I will give unto every one of you according to your works. But unto you I say, and unto the rest in Thyatira, as many as have not this doctrine, and which have not known the depths of Satan, as they speak, I will put upon you none other burden, but that which ye have already hold fast till I come. All right, so this woman's tied in with the depths of Satan. Very interesting, but I want you to notice three things there. Number one, she teaches. Number two, she seduces God's servants into fornication. Number three, she eats things which are sacrificed unto idols. How can we identify this woman? Charismatic nutties, they say, oh, there are women that you can date and they have the spirit of Jezebel or something and the spirit of Jezebel and all this stuff. Uh, no, it's symbolic of a system that's there in the end times and it goes up through. Number one, she teaches. Matthew chapter 13. Let's go to Matthew chapter 13. We'll see how this woman Jezebel teaches. Matthew chapter 13, verse 33. Three threes. You'll see why that matters here in a minute. Matthew 13, verse 33. Okay, it says here, Another parable spake he unto them, The kingdom of heaven, being a reference to a physical kingdom on the earth, you know, Naboth's vineyard, the vineyard of Jesus Christ, the millennial kingdom, the kingdom of heaven is like unto leaven, which a woman took and hid in three measures of meal till the whole was leavened. What is that talking about? Well, I'm going to give you the proof of this. Um, the three measures of meal, I believe, are Shem, Ham, and Japheth. Three measures of meal till the whole was leavened. All of mankind. I believe that that's what's going on. But what is the leaven? Well, go to Matthew chapter 16. Matthew chapter 16, verse 5 through 12. It says here, And when his disciples were come to the other side, they had forgotten to take bread. Then Jesus said unto them, Take heed and beware of the leaven of the Pharisees and of the Sadducees. And they reasoned among themselves, saying, It is because we have taken no bread. Which when Jesus perceived, he said unto them, O ye of little faith, why reason ye among yourselves, because ye have brought no bread? Do ye not yet remember, neither rem do ye not yet understand, neither remember the five loaves of the five thousand, and how many baskets ye took up? Neither the seven loaves of the four thousand, and how many baskets ye took up? How is it that ye do not understand that I spake it not to you concerning bread, that ye should beware of the leaven of the Pharisees and of the Sadducees? Then understood they how that he bade them not beware of the leaven of bread, but of the doctrine of the Pharisees and of the Sadducees. What is the doctrine? Let's look about that. Matthew chapter 7. The Bible defines itself. You don't need to go to commentaries and whatever else. Just do word studies and just look up the word leaven and you'll find what it means. What is the doctrine of the Pharisees and of the Sadducees? Matthew chapter 7, verse 5 through 13. The Bible says, Thou hypocrite, first cast out the beam out of thine own eye, and then shalt thou see clearly to cast out the boat out of thy brother's eye. Give not that which is holy unto the dogs, neither cast ye your pearls before swine, lest they trample them under their feet, and turn again and rend you. 
Ask, and it shall be given you. Seek, and ye shall find. Knock, and it shall be opened unto you. For every one that asketh receiveth, and he that seeketh findeth. And to him that knocketh it shall be opened. Uh, verse 13, I'm reading too. Or what man is there of you whom if his son ask bread, will he give him a stone? Or if he ask a fish, will he give him a serpent? If ye then, being evil, know how to give good gifts unto your children, how much more shall your Father which is in heaven give good things to them that ask him? Um, therefore, all things whatsoever ye do, that men should do to you, do ye even so to them, for this is the law and the prophets. Am I reading the right thing here? 7 verse 5 through 13. I wonder if I wrote down the wrong thing. Enter ye in at the straight gate, for wide is the gate, and broad is the way that leadeth to destruction, and many there be which go in thereat. I think I got the wrong reference here. Verse, those verses are fine, of course, but uh, let me see. Maybe it was... No. All right. I think I got the completely wrong... I wrote something down wrong. Again, I failed at papal infallibility. I just not a very good pope, I guess. <laughs> okay, Mark. It's Mark, not Matthew, like I've written here in my notes. Mark chapter seven, verse five through thirteen. <laughs> Uh, I'll have to talk to my professional film team about this. You know, this was a terrible mistake. I hope the television stations don't drop me now. I don't have any, but anyhow. <laughs> I should clarify because if I don't, then there's you know, going to be rumors started. And they'll, he admitted to being on television. He admitted to have a professional film crew or something. <laughs> Mark chapter 7, verse 5. Then the Pharisees and scribes asked him, Why not? Why walk not thy disciples according to the tradition of the elders, but eat bread with unwashed hands? He answered and said unto them, Well hath Isaiah prophesied of you hypocrites, as it is written, This people honoreth me with their lips, but their heart is far from me. Howbeit in vain they worship me, teaching for doctrines the commandments of men. That's the, the leaven there, the doctrine of the Pharisees. For laying aside the commandment of God, ye hold the tradition of men as the washing of pots and cups, and many other such like things ye do. And he said unto them, Full well ye reject the commandment of God, that ye may keep your own tradition. For Moses said, Honor thy father and thy mother, and whoso curseth father or mother, let him die the death. But ye say, If a man shall say to his father or mother, It is Corban, that is to say a gift, tax deductible, <laughs> Um, by whatsoever thou mightest be profited by me, he shall be free. And ye suffer um, him no more to do aught for his mother, father or his mother, making the word of God of none effect through your tradition, which ye have delivered, and many, many such like things do ye. Who taught Jezebel how to overthrow the scriptures with divine tradition? Who taught her? The Pharisees. That's where they got it from. Ahab taught Jezebel. Jezebel didn't teach Ahab. And she takes that leaven and she just mixes it all through the three different measures of meal, the three different kindreds of people, till the whole is leavened. And you look at every single race out there, every ethnicity, whatever you want to say, kindred, tongue, people, nation, they all have things where they hold tradition above this book. Every single one of them. Hmm. Acts chapter 23. The book of Acts chapter 23. And the Catholics don't even hide it. I mean, you can look it up in the catechism. You can um, look up. There's lots of videos on YouTube. Where they say that they hold sacred tradition above, or, you know, uh, a divine tradition above sacred scripture is what they say. That's their stand that they take. Acts chapter 23, verses 6 through 8. But when Paul perceived that the one part were Sadducees and the other Pharisees, he cried out in the council, Men and brethren, I am a Pharisee, the son of a Pharisee, of the hope and resurrection of the dead, I am called in question. 
And when he had so said, there arose a dissension between the Pharisees and the Sadducees, and the multitude was divided. Now here's the leaven of the Sadducees. You ready? For the Sadducees say that there is no resurrection, neither angel nor spirit, but the Pharisees confess both. So what do you have? You have the religious liberal. A lot of the Catholic theologians, they don't believe in the supernatural. They'll say, well, we don't go with some of the supernatural aspects of Scripture. We have our divine traditions and things. So you take the Sadducees and the Pharisees, that leaven, and you mix it in to the different races of people, the three measures of meal, through the woman, Jezebel. She teaches, you see. Huh. Hey, uh, priest so-and-so, you know, <clears throat> father, when he's not actually a real father, doesn't have any children, at least that he admit, admits to, you know. <clears throat> he might have a few on the side or something like that that's kind of covered up. But, uh, hey, uh, their father, um, what right do you have to preach these things? What right do you have? Holy Mother Church gives me the ability to speak. <coughs> hmm. Gesundheit. Um, my wife over that way. Uh, isn't that interesting? It's the woman that gives these priests the authority. Jezebel controlling her priests of Baal to get out there and spread that leaven and put it into all the different things out there. New Testament's finished. What, will you, what do you have to say about the New Testament? The Catholics come along and they say, well, uh, we'll get our catechism, our divine traditions, our church fathers, and whatever else. Hmm. The Jews come along and they say, we have the Talmud. We have uh, other the, the rabbinical traditions and everything. Uh, Islam. We have the Quran. All these different things. You go through all the different things out there. Is the Bible enough? Are you going to be a Bible believer? Well, the Bible's good in some ways, but we have our book of discipline. We have our small catechism. We have our this. We have our that. and All these other traditions. Hey, do you believe that Jesus was God manifest in the flesh? Well, I think he was a good man. He was a teacher. He was a prophet. But I don't think he was God. Huh. So you hold to certain truths from the scriptures, but then you deny the supernatural. Sadducee. You see? And who was it that went out and spread all that out there? Who was it that created Islam? Uh, that would have been the Roman Catholic Church. Very interesting. All right. Next, we're going to go to 1 Timothy chapter 4. 1 Timothy chapter 4. <clears throat> Verses 1 and 2. The Bible says, Now the Spirit speaketh expressly that in the latter times some shall depart from the faith, giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils, speaking lies and hypocrisy, having their conscience seared with a hot iron. Again, there you go. This woman, Jezebel, she's taught these hirelings out there. She infiltrates even the Protestant seminaries and things, the Baptists and all the other, and she teaches them to speak lies and hypocrisy. The Word of God is here for you today, friend. You say, that book in your hand? Well, of course, the Word of God is... Wait, hold on. Is it perfect? Do you believe that that book that you hold in your hands is perfect? No, no, it's just a translation. Um, you know, it should be clarified. It should be, you know, corrected and whatever else. No translation is inspired. In order. Why did you call it God's Word? You wouldn't be speaking lies and hypocrisy, would you? Yeah, they do. They speak lies and hypocrisy. Why? Because Jezebel taught them to do it. Jezebel covers lots of teachings. Um, a lot of Protestants, you know what they teach? They teach that the original church was Catholic. Even while claiming to reject Roman Catholicism, they'll say, well, yeah, the original Christians called themselves Catholic. Book, chapter, and verse, please. Where's it at? It's not there. Who taught them that? The woman, Jezebel. Hmm. Very interesting. Number two, she seduces God's servants into fornication. Let's look about that. Revelation chapter 17. Revelation 17, verse 1 through 5. And there came one of the seven angels which had the seven vials and talked with me, saying unto me, 
Come hither, I will show unto thee the judgment of the great whore that sitteth upon many waters, with whom the kings of the earth have committed fornication, and the inhabitants of the earth have been made drunk with the wine of her fornication. So he carried me away in the spirit into the wilderness, and I saw a woman sit upon a scarlet-colored beast full of names of blasphemy, having seven heads and ten horns. There's your seven and ten again. And the woman was arrayed in purple and scarlet collar, and decked with gold and precious stones and pearls, having a golden cup in her hand, full of abominations and filthiness of her fornication. And upon her forehead was a name written, Mystery Babylon the Great, the mother of harlots and abominations of the earth. Huh. It's a financial system of fornication. That's what's going on here. And you say, how's that? I, I don't understand. It's through the debt system. I'm real sorry to tell you this. I'm going to offend a lot of people, but that's what I do. Um, if you're in debt, you're in that system. The wine of her fornication. I want a house. I need a nice house. You don't understand, Brother Brian. I would agree with you on the thing of being debt-free, but you just don't understand. Oh, really? Oh, really? Oh, we're a single family income. So are we. I'm inside of an old reefer trailer right now that I fixed up into a tiny house. No electricity. These lights that you see, that's the light that's in here. No running water. Oh, you don't understand, Brother Brian. We have to do these things. Oh, oh really? You're talking to the wrong guy. You don't even try to talk to me and say, oh, brother, you don't understand. We have to be in debt. We have no choice. That's not true. That is not true. Well, brother, we live in an expensive area. I used to as well. And I looked and I said, there's no hope of me ever being able to rent any place in this area, much less buy a place with a, some kind of mortgage or whatever, and especially debt free. You know what I had to do? I had to move. And we've gone through a lot of suffering to stay debt free. And you know what? It's worth it. And here we are all these years later, we're doing pretty good. All things considered, we're not doing too bad financially. But it takes time to do things the Lord's way. But you look at that wine of that fornication between the people Uden, the bankers and things, and Wall Street and all these financier guys that just make a killing off of usury and interest payments. And you look at that and you go, hmm, boy, I'd like to have a new vehicle like that. And it'd be nice to have a nice new house and... Oh boy, a lot of you, I'm not going to get through to you. I just, let's be straight about this. Let's just be completely frank. A lot of you, your ears are closed. You're just saying, oh, whatever, Denlinger. Denlinger's a nut. I like some of what he does, blah, 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 whatever. But I'm trying to get through to some of you out there that still have a brain and still have fear of God. And you can look and you can say, I don't want to be in debt. I don't want that wine of the fornication. I mean, I'm going to show this in an upcoming study, but we have a, a book, American Banking Association, is it? Yeah, American Banking Association, and it says in that book, if you get a dollar in deposit, you need to loan that thing out and get that thing spent as quick as possible. One dollar, one dollar. You put anything in the bank, those thieves will steal it and they'll give it to anybody you want. Some pervert story time hour or whatever else, they get the money. They come in. I want a loan. They take it out of your account. Filthiness, fornication, all kinds of stuff. You say, well, then we shouldn't have a bank account. No, I didn't say that. I understand in this world system and everything else. But don't keep much don't keep much money in there. And for, you know, whatever sake, uh, don't go into them and say, I want to borrow money. You don't know where that money's coming from. Just like the thing of monetizing videos here on YouTube. You monetize these videos. Not one of my videos has ever been monetized. YouTube will monetize my videos against my permission, against my will. I've never given them permission to do that, but you know, ones that certain ones they'll put their ads on it. You know, but ad revenue, you don't know where it's coming from. I have had to send donations back to certain people because I say, hey, you're not part of this thing. You're wicked, you're whatever. I'm sending it back. I had Steven Anderson send me one the one time, sent me a donation. I sent it back. So, wow, you know, I'll turn the devil's money into the Lord's money. Amen. Hey, preach it, brother. Yeah, no. I actually knew a, a uh, Christ's home in Paradise, Pennsylvania. Jerry Walls was the guy's name, and he actually made that statement the one time to my father. 
they were getting money from the Lions Club and the Masons and whatever else. And he said, hey, I'll take the devil's money and turn it into the Lord's money. Uh, <laughs> that's dangerous. That's very dangerous. And of course, you can come up with all your little arguments in the comment section. Well, Brother Ryan, technically, if you have a dollar bill, it's a fiat Federal Reserve note. And, and therefore, if you're using dollar bills, you're part of the B system too or something. <laughs> whatever. Whatever. Come up with your arguments. Convince yourself to stay in your sin. Don't take the advice of a seasoned, older preacher that knows how to do things debt-free. Don't take my advice. Stay in the debt system and see where it gets you. Okay? Pay two to three times over the original purchase price because of your interest payments and just destroy yourself, your financial future. Don't listen to the idiot right here that actually knows better than you do. All right? Because you're, you know, 18 years old or 19 years old or in your early 20s or something or whatever else. And you certainly know a guy, more than a, a guy that's 48 years old, born in the last century. You know, yeah, you'd know a lot more. Um, <clears throat> 1 Corinthians chapter 6. But Brother Brian, we needed to get a loan to get our church building, and we're leading a lot more people to the Lord than I'm, than I'm sure you are. Okay, so, you know, there are purposes for mortgages, Brother Brian. There really are, and you shouldn't be so judgmental and so, what's the word? Um, legalistic. There you go, legalistic. You know, we can use debt for good things, you know. Okay, then give me some scripture that says that. 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verses 12 through 18. All things are lawful unto me, but all things are not expedient. All things are lawful for me, but I will not be brought under the power of any. Can you tell me that you can be in debt and not be brought under the power of that debt? Always thinking about how you're going to make your payment and everything else? Yeah. <laughs> meats for the belly and the belly for meats, but God shall destroy both it and them. Now the body is not for fornication. But for the Lord, and the Lord for the body, and God hath both raised up the Lord, and will also raise us up, up us by his own power. Know ye not that your bodies are the members of Christ? Shall I then take the members of Christ, and make them the members of an harlot? God forbid. I'm borrowing my money from the Vatican. Oh, by the way, and the whole church building thing with the Sunday best and the you know, all the other stuff. Uh, well, that's kind of from Rome too, but you know, let's not be too picky here. Um, what? Know ye not that he which is joined to an harlot is one body? For two, saith he, shall be one flesh. But he that is joined unto the Lord is one spirit. Flee fornication. Get away from that fornication debt stuff. Flee it. Every sin that a man doeth is without the body, but he that committeth fornication sinneth against his own body. You see, brother, it's talking about sexual sin. It has nothing to do with debt. It doesn't have a thing to do with debt. Really? Can you make application, though? I mean, yeah, you fornicate sexually and things. It's a terrible way to destroy your own body. You'll get all kinds of venereal diseases and whatnot. But what about the thing of financial fornication? Are you sinning against your own body? I remember seeing my father worried about this bill and worried about that bill and sitting there at the night and at the table and things and looking at all the bills spread out over the table. How am I going to pay for this? How am I going to pay for that? <sighs> I go to bed at night and I don't have to think about how am I going to make this payment or whatever. God doesn't want to, you to live in a, with a spirit of fear like that. I'm trying to help you. What know ye not that your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost, which is in you, which ye have of God, and ye are not your own? For ye are bought with a price. Therefore glorify God in your body and in your spirit, which are God's. You belong to God. You shouldn't belong to the bank. You say, well, Brother Brian, I don't belong to the bank. This is ridiculous. I've never heard this kind of absurd preaching. I don't know if I should watch the rest. Well, you probably shouldn't if you're feeling that way. But you say, I don't belong to the bank. That's nuts. Uh, look into a mortgage-backed security sometime. Yes, you are owned by the bank. You have taken a death pledge, a mortgage. But do whatever you want. Thirdly, she eats things sacrificed unto idols. 
Jezebel. Go back to the book of Jeremiah. Jeremiah chapter 7. Jeremiah chapter 7, verse 16, down through verse 20. The Bible says, Therefore pray not thou for this people, neither lift up cry nor prayer for them, neither make intercession to me, for I will not hear thee. Um, I think that Israel is going to all, they're going to get, all get saved and things and will avoid the time of Jacob's trouble. It's already preordained. It's already been written. That's the way it's going to be. Verse 17, Seest thou not what they do in the cities of Judah and in the streets of Jerusalem? The streets of Jerusalem where you have the church of the uh, Holy Sepulchre and a lot of other Catholic buildings. I think it was the Oslo Accord or something like that back in the 1990s where the Vatican and Israel made an agreement, a covenant perhaps, and um, they agreed to give certain holy sites to the Catholics and certain holy sites to the Jews. Verse 18. The children gather wood, and the fathers kindle the fire, and the women knead their dough to make cakes to the queen of heaven, and to pour out drink offerings unto other gods, that they may provoke me to anger. If you understand the Catholic Trinity, by the way, it's three different gods. God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit, little birdie boy. And then you have the Queen of Heaven, Holy Mary, the Mother of God. Hmm. Interesting. And if you study it in the Old Testament, you have Ashtaroth here, who's the goddess of the Zidonians, by the way. Forgot to mention that. Jezebel is a Zidonian. Ashtaroth is the goddess of the Zidonians. Huh. And then you have, I think it was Baal, Chemosh, and Kion or something like that. Three male gods and one female deity. God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit, and Holy Mary, Mother of God. It's all the same, only the names have changed. To quote a stupid rock song that I used to listen to. Uh, hmm. The pagans like their gods. They just have to change the names a little bit to deceive the hearts of the simple. Verse 19. Do they provoke me to anger, saith the Lord? Do they not provoke themselves to the confusion of their own faces? Therefore thus saith the Lord God, Behold, mine anger and my fury shall be poured out upon this place, upon man, and upon beast, and upon the trees of the field, and upon the fruit of the ground, and it shall burn and shall not be quenched. Another reference to a city there, oh, I should, well, yeah, a city, where they're making cakes to the queen of heaven. That's what they call Mary. She's the queen of heaven. Huh. And the Lord's going to burn it. How could you miss it? Just right there. Jeremiah chapter 44. Jeremiah 44 verse 15 through 29. Then all the men which knew that their wives had burned incense unto other gods, and all the women that stood by, a great multitude, even all the people that dwelt in the land of Egypt in Pathros, answered Jeremiah, saying, As for the word that thou hast spoken unto us in the name of the Lord, we will not hearken unto thee. Well, at least they're honest. You know, Man, we will not hearken unto thee. But we will certainly do whatsoever thing goeth forth out of our own mouth. Tradition over Scripture? The word of the Lord that you spoke to us, we don't want to hear that. But our own traditions will do that. Little leaven. Leaveneth the whole lump. To burn incense unto the queen of heaven. See the priest with his incense thing burning like this? And to pour out drink offerings unto her. As we have done, we and our fathers, our kings and our princes in the cities of Judah and in the streets of Jerusalem, for then had we plenty of victuals, and were well, and saw no evil. We're very well off financially. Uh, look at us. We're the, the Sassoon family, and the Astor family, and, 
and the Rothschilds and, and all these great big Jewish families and were very wealthy. It's going to show a book up there, but I'll keep that for another study. Um, <clears throat> but, verse 18, Since we left off to burn incense to the Queen of Heaven and to pour out drink offerings unto her, we have wanted all things and have been consumed by the sword and by the famine. And when we burned incense to the Queen of Heaven and poured out drink offerings unto her, did we make her cakes to worship her and pour out drink offerings unto her without our men? <clears throat> then Jeremiah said unto all the people and to the, men, to the men and to the women and to all the people which had given him that answer, saying, The incense that ye burn in the cities of Judah and in the streets of Jerusalem, ye and your fathers, your kings and your princes and the people of the land, did not the Lord remember them and came it not into his mind? so that the Lord could no longer bear because of the evil of your doings and because of, your, of the abominations which ye have committed. Therefore is your land a desolation and an astonishment and a curse without an inhabitant as, it, as at this day. Because ye have burned incense and because ye have sinned against the Lord and have not obeyed the voice of the Lord nor walked in his, laws, in his law nor in his statutes nor in his testimonies, therefore this evil is happened unto you as at this day." They're not walking according to the word of the Lord. It's their own traditions. It's the leaven. You see? Moreover, Jeremiah said unto all the people and to all the women, Hear the word of the Lord, all Judah that are in the land of Egypt. Thus saith the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, saying, Ye and your wives have both spoken with your mouths and fulfilled with your hand, saying, We will surely perform our vows that we have vowed to burn incense to the queen of heaven and to pour out drink offerings unto her. Ye will surely accomplish your vows, and surely perform your vows. Therefore hear ye the word of the Lord, all Judah that dwell in the land of Egypt. Behold, I have sworn by my great name, saith the Lord, that my name shall be no more named in the mouth of any man of Judah in all the land of Egypt, saying, The Lord God liveth. Behold, I will watch over them for evil and not for good, and all the men of Judah that are in the land of Egypt shall be consumed by the sword and by the famine until there be an end of them. Yet a small number that escape the sword shall return out of the land of Egypt and the land of Judah. And all the remnant of Judah that are gone into the land of Egypt to sojourn there shall know whose words shall stand mine or theirs. Huh. And this shall be a sign unto you, saith the Lord, that I will punish you in this place, that ye may know that my words shall surely stand against you for evil. Papal Uden, the scriptures tell you exactly what's going to happen to you for all of your evil financial dealings, all your fornication with the Vatican, all your scheming and everything else. The Bible already has your number and that's why you don't like to preach about it. Roman Catholics, the Bible has your number as well. Because you let those Jewish merchants make you wealthy. You let them do your dirty work. You take your sword out there and you do the killing. You do the wars and everything else. And murder innocent people and shed innocent blood to make yourself more wealthy through these wicked Jews. And you've been doing it for a long time. Woe be to you. Your damnation is coming. Finally, 1 Corinthians chapter 10. Go there yet. 1 Corinthians chapter 10. First Corinthians chapter 10, verse 18 through 22. Behold Israel after the flesh. For all the stupid replacement theology people out there that say the church is spiritually now Israel, so there is no more Jews after the flesh. Well, what do you do with that? Israel after the flesh. Are not they which eat of the sacrifices partakers of the altar? What say I then, that the idol is anything, or that which is offered in sacrifice to idols is anything? But I say that the things which the Gentiles sacrifice, Jezebel in other words, they sacrifice to devils. Your trinity with Holy Mary, Mother of God. They're devils. And not to God. And I would not that ye should have fellowship with devils. 
Ye cannot drink the cup of the Lord and the cup of devils. Ye cannot be partakers of the Lord's table and of the table of devils. Little cakes to the queen of heaven, they're for devils. Do we provoke the Lord to jealousy? Are we stronger than he? So there you have it. That is the end of that one. Next, I'm going to prove to you from the scriptures that the fifth kingdom, spoken of in Daniel chapter 2, the fifth kingdom of Satan, give him credit for it, is uh, this very thing. The wicked Christ-rejecting Jews and the Roman Catholic Church merging. Iron and clay coming together. That's what it is. I'll show you from the scriptures in the next study. Um, but, uh, you know, again, just to make it very plain, if you're a Jew, you have time to repent. If you're a Roman Catholic, you have time to repent. But if you repent not, if you say, I can see what the word of the Lord is saying. I can't deny it. The word of the Lord says that. But you know what? My divine tradition, my Talmud, my this, my that, my, my Kabbalah, my uh, rabbinical traditions, the church fathers say this, that, that. And we can overthrow you what you're saying. St. Thomas, I'd rather listen to St. Thomas Aquinas than Brian Denling or any day of the week. Uh, yes, you're proving it from the scriptures, but we can't have the scriptures as our own, only authority. Then you're like the people in the book of Jeremiah. And you deserve exactly what's coming to you. So enjoy your little, you know, wealth and your little mansions and little plastic mansions and everything else that you have. Enjoy it right now because it's going to be very short-lived. What shall it profit a man if he gains the whole world and loses his own soul? Or what shall a man give in exchange for his soul? That is going to be it. And we'll see you in the next study. Thank you for watching.